Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example, we have the equation y times the sine of z ds. So this is a some sort of shape in three-dimensional space. And we're trying to integrate the line integral such that the curve is a helix where x equals the cosine of t, y equals the sine of t, and z equals t. So we already have been given the parametric equations, but what that really is as t increases, z of course increases in height. Notice that the limit from t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So when we go to 2 pi, z will be, have a value of 2 pi. And since x and y are functions of the cosine and the sine, basically we have a spiral or a helix go that goes upward, makes one complete term, as a way it makes one complete term, it gains a height of z equals to 2 pi. So that will be the curve along which we will integrate for this function right here, y equals the sine of z. So what we need to do now is we need to replace what y and z are equal to in terms of t and use t limits and of course also change ds. So let's go ahead and do that. Write the equation or the integral that will allow us to find the solution here. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi, because we're now going to be integrating over t, and y here can now be replaced by the sine of t, so we have the sine of t, and then we have the sine of z, but z is equal to t, so multiply this times the sine of t times ds, which is equal to the square root of the x dt quantity squared plus the y dt quantity squared, Oop, there we go, plus dz dt quantity squared times dt. So it's the proper replacement for ds, Oop, right here, ds, in terms of the, of the parametric variable t. Now since we know what x, y, and z are, we can find the dx dt, dy dt, and dz dt. So dx dt will be equal to the derivative of the cosine, which is the negative sine. The dy dt is the derivative of the sine, which is equal to the cosine. And finally, the dz dt, which is the derivative of t, which is simply equal to 1. And so those can be plugged in here, and we get the following. This is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi times the sine squared of t times the square root of the x dt squared would be the minus sine of t squared minus sine of t quantity squared plus dy dt which would be the cosine of t quantity squared and plus dz dt which is 1 squared times dt. Now notice that this is the sine squared t plus the cosine squared t, which is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2, and so we have the square root of 2, so this becomes equal to, I can pull the square root of 2 outside the integral sign times the integral from 0 to 2 pi times the sine square of t, but that one I'm going to write as 1 half times 1 minus the cosine of 2t times dt. And then the one half can come outside the integral sign, so this is equal to the square root of 2 over 2, right, from this, times, and it's probably better to write it as two separate integrals. The first integral will be dt from 0 to 2 pi, because we have dt times 1. And then the second one, we have the minus, so minus the integral of the cosine of 2t, the cosine of 2t times dt, but of course, we need a 2 dt there, so we need a proper differential, and so we need the 1 half in front to compensate for that. And the limits of integration are from 0 to 2 pi. So now we can go ahead and integrate those, so this becomes equal to the square root of 2 over 2, times, so here we have t evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, and then we have minus one-half times the integral of the cosine. Let's see here. The derivative of sine is the cosine, so the integral of cosine is the positive sine, so it would be, and the, so the minus stays intact, so minus one-half times the sine of 2t evaluated, evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, like that. 
And then right away we realize, since this is the sine function, when we plug in 2 pi, we get 2 times 2 pi, which is 4 pi, so that's 0. Plug in the lower limit, sine is 0, 0. So the sine does not contribute anything to the integral. And then here, plug in the lower limit, we get 0. Plug in the upper limit, we get 2 pi. So this becomes equal to the square root of 2 over 2 times 2 pi. The 2's cancel out, so this is equal to the square root of 2 times pi. And that's the result of that particular integral. So now, after you've seen a number of these types of examples, it begins to get a little bit easier, especially since they already gave you the parametric equations. So that's how it's done.